you for tuning into the service today. Our prayer is that your soul would be blessed and your life enriched. We have been blessed by the penmanship of our beloved evangelist, Shirley Murray. She is known for empowering, educating, and mentoring people across this world. You too can be blessed. Dr. Shirley Murray authored several books designed to share knowledge and divinely ordered guidance and everyday practical advice to women, Christians, and those simply seeking a better life. Some notable titles include Strength in the Time of Need, The Power of Silence, Bible Helps A to Z, and Woman to Woman. Woman to Woman is filled with practical knowledge, humor, common sense, and clarity. The book addresses the often dreaded and misunderstood change of life and menopause period in a woman's life. This is a must read book for every woman. This book delivers a kind of learning that counts and gets to the nitty gritty of what to do during this very difficult time of a woman's life. Just when you feel that life has placed you on an emotional roller coaster, woman to woman brings inner strength and peace of mind. We pray and trust that you too will be blessed by these powerful books.
calling your attention to the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it reads as this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. We're going to take a little thought this morning from that portion of Scripture. Let Christ change your life. Amen. Let Christ change your life. I realize that so many have tried, and you tried, and you tried over and over again. But you haven't been able to change your way. But if you just come to Jesus and let him change your life, you will never be the same again. 2007 has been a very tragic year. A year of corruption. Firms corrupted. Police force corrupted. Corruption on every hand. Banks corrupted. There have been corruption on every hand. This has been a bad year. Tragedies on every hand. Killings. Mothers killing their own born children. Fathers killing up the whole family. And that death angel just rioted on every hand, killing after killing after killing. You know, sometimes you hate to turn your TV on because it's so much killing. I was listening the other day, it said six people in a family was killed. Amen. And the sad part about it, it said her boyfriend that the one of the ladies that lived there, it was her daughter and her boyfriend. Killings? I mean, people have murder on their mind. Blood is in the eyes of many people today. We need God, people. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. My God, people are stealing. Robbing, walking in the bank, broad open, open daylight, teenagers robbing. Oh, this is a sad day. When you leave home today, you don't know whether you're going to get back. Children being stole out of their own yard. You used to collect your children play in the yard and run all down the street and play. You can't do that anymore. People is taking children out of the yard never to be seen or heard from anymore. People, this is a terrible, terrible day and time. Christ need to change some lives. Amen. Amen. We need to depend on God to change some lives. You don't know who in, you don't know who's in your house. You don't know who's in your house. So but just my daughters and sons and cousins, you don't know who's in your house. You may not even wake up in the morning. That's the reason you need God in your life. There are many forms of godliness, but a whole lot of denying the power thereof. Praise God. We're living in a day and time now that I have never in my life before seen so many beautiful edifices. And thank God for our edifice that the God has given us. But I have never seen so many beautiful churches packed out and the people preaching nothing. Telling people that you can't live holy. 
You can't live a sin-free life. God don't expect you to do this. You come to God one time and he uh, forgive you of your sin and they come up with a dry-eyed prayer. Lord, Lord, forgive me of my sins and set me into your kingdom. Now you a child of God. You haven't even asked God to forgive you of your sins. We need God. Many churches is taking the people astray. You would think that in the church, if you said church, when I was a girl, they said, Sister Mary, you old. That's all right. That's all right. But I still remember. I don't have all timers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when you said church. That meant something. I don't care if you was talking about a Baptist church. That meant something. That meant that uh, either any denomination, if you said church, the people tried to live something. But we're living in a day and time now that people are not trying to live nothing. They had church every Sunday, Wednesday night prayer service, or Tuesday night prayer service, or whatever, but they go in there not even having a mind to serve God. And heaven knows how bad they look coming in what they call the house of God. What happened? Somebody done let up and decided to let the people go their own way. But I got news for you today, church, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Not that he's going to be. A lot of people talking about in the by and by what you're going to be, but I'm telling you now, if you don't live it here, you're not going in the sweet by and by. Amen. Amen. You are going in the woe be by and by. Because you're going to have to live right. My God, I was thinking about this, this portion of scripture God was dealing with me about this portion of scripture. If any man, white man, black man, green man if there be any, yellow man, red man, human man, any man, he's a new creature. Amen. And I want you to know he said all things. All that mess you was doing. Do you know when you come to God, you got to be delivered from mess. Yes, you do, because the devil got you in a mess. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Do you know what passed away means? Now, when people die, what do you say? She passed. She passed away. She's gone. And that's what sin is when, when Jesus come into our life, sin is gone. The devil and God cannot live in the same temple. I don't care what nobody say. If the devil is in there, God is not in there. Because you see, they wars one against another. Amen. And they cannot stay in the same temple. Hallelujah. All things is become new. Don't you want this new life? Why don't you let Christ change your life? He will come in and he will make you brand new. And that's the reason why that you don't walk the way you used to walk. You don't talk the way you used to talk. Amen. You don't live the way you used to live. 
Amen. You, maybe you used to curse and blaspheme the name of God, but you don't do that anymore. Because you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. I tell you, God is looking for new creatures. God is sick of hypocrisy. So am I. I said, so am I. I hate to see people living one thing and say they live in one thing and live in another. Amen. You, you got to live right to make it in. I say you've got to live right to make it in. St. John 3 and 5 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Of God. You must be. You got to be. Born again. And when Christ comes into your life. A new birth. Comes into, into your life. You are born. From a sinner. To a saint. You know. When God comes into your life. And when you are born again. You just knew. All that old Ad Adamic sin that, that Adam brought into the world is gone. Amen. Amen. We is born through by the second Adam. Yeah. Jesus Christ was the second Adam. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we were born from the flesh to the spirit. And that's the way a lot of people, when you get saved, they see such a vast difference in your life. You can leave work Friday, come and get saved Saturday or Sunday, go back on your job Monday morning, and people will be coming by saying, what happened to you? You, you, you don't look the same. Something happened. You all right? Honey, you ought to start to shout and say, I show him. Oh, I'm all right now. Hallelujah, because I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Let Christ change your life. Can't nobody else change your life like Christ can change your life. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. What did that say? Bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your bodies. A lot of folks say, God don't care what I wear. Oh, he don't? What did this say? Your what? That means God care how you look. God don't accept everything. I don't care. You can sing like a mockingbird. But if you standing up in God's house with one of them little mini skirts on, talking about, oh, how I love Jesus, God ain't thinking about you. He ain't thinking about you. He's saying like he said in the days of old, take away your melodies. I don't even want to hear them. We have to present our bodies holy. My God. That's the reason people can't present their bodies because they're not holy. Once you give your life to Christ and let Christ change your life, he brings the Holy Ghost into your soul. And he changes you. You don't desire to wear minis anymore. You, you, you just want to be a good-looking, holy person for God Amen. with nice, clean skin. A holy person don't have to put on a bunch of makeup. Do you see what it said? That said, make up. And then that mascara, <laughs> mascara you, 
You don't have to put that on. Our bodies have to be a living sacrifice. And that's the reason why we, as holy women, sacrifices. We don't put that stuff on of the world because we have sacrificed our bodies to Christ. A lot of people say, Sister Mary, I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. That's you. But I understand that Jezebel was the one who wore it. And I understand the scripture that said she was the great whore. I understand that. And I understand that she was destroyed. Amen. She was restored. She was threw out of the a second or third story window. Wasn't she? Threw her down and killed her. And the dogs ate up her flesh. My God. And we as holy women, this is the reason why we don't want to go around all painted up, shout dresses on. A lot of folks call themselves saved. And honey, if they bent over in church, it would be a disgrace. And many people don't even realize what the scripture said. They say, I want to be saved. I want to live like the Lord want to live. And they say, I want to live where God can use me anywhere at any time. And they're sitting up in the pulpit right here behind the sacred desk with pantsuit on. Great big old women. I can't say what I want to say. But it, it's a shame. The day and time that we are living in, people don't care how they look coming to the house of God. It don't make them a bit of difference. And now the women got where they get up in the pulpit and cross their legs like a man. Trying to bring in that old manly spirit. Trying to be something you know you are not. My God, this is a terrible day we living in. And I want you to know that ain't nothing but that old homosexual Spirit. You can say anything you want to say, ladies. Anything you want to say. They got where right now the people call you up and say, uh, Sister Mary, I just thought I would call to tell you guys I'm going out of town. And you know, I can see that old sexuality spirit, that old homosexuality spirit. And I just stop him right there and said, listen, don't call me and pastor no guys. Because there's not but one guy here in this house. It ain't no you guys. That's a trick of the devil. That's that old homosexuality spirit. Amen. Trying to latch on to the church and the church people. Y'all quit saying that. That's not pop proper or that's nothing to say. I just call you guys guys. My God. Amen. And, and, and some, some of the members here know I'll tell you too. You call my house talking about you guys. Amen. Because I mean, I mean for folk to cut that out. That ain't right. My God, what a day. You need to let Christ change your life. And you will lose yourself of that old carnal mind. That's carnal mind. I look, and a lot of time I look uh, at uh, churches all across the country and across the world. And I see that these pants have latched on everywhere. 
A lot of time I'm sitting in the shopping center, maybe send my daughter in the store or something, and uh, I'm sitting in the car looking and counting to see how many women went in there with a dress on. Sometimes three or four. Because that, that's a spirit. It have took over the world. If you're going to live holy, live holy. Let the world see Jesus in your life. A lot of people say, Sister Mary, you just old timey. I believe in the word of God where you don't believe Deuteronomy 22 and 5. You don't believe it? It's a many uh, uh, minister get up and preach and say, God ain't looking at your clothes. But you got to present what? A living sacrifice. Holy. Look at that. Holy. Honey, when the Holy Ghost come in, the Bible said it's a lead and it's a guide. And it said he would lead you into all truths. Whatsoever is true, the Holy Ghost will lead you into it. And I know good and well that Lord hadn't took his word back. He did not take back Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It still means what it said. And he hadn't took it back. Because when you read over in Revelation 21, and because God said it's an abomination for a woman to put on anything that pertained to a man. Didn't it say so? And now they tell you, these are not men pants. These is women pants. The zipper is on the side. The devil is alive. I don't care where they put the zipper at. Pants is pants. And they pertain to a man. Even the people that is at the filling station. A lot of these folks say they hold it. Some of them say they're men and women of God. But you don't understand. Even at the filling station, on those doors to the bathrooms, in the ladies' restroom, they got a dress on. Am I right? And in the men's restroom, they got on pants. Now, if you can't understand that, I got to say, you got Alzheimer's or something. <laughs> praise God, praise God. But God is looking for a holy people. Living sacrifice, which unto God is your reasonable. In other words, this is what you ought to do. You supposed to do this. Amen. Amen. And I know a lot of people don't like what we preach. That's okay. That's okay. I, but I, we preach what the Bible says. And if you don't like that, and so... Amen. You see, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's why we got to be born again. Amen. Amen. God made these new creatures. We are God made. We're not man made. The man made creatures, when they come in the world, they got the spirit of the devil in them. Yes, they do. A little, a little baby. The devil uses them. Sometimes you say, leave that alone. Stop it. And they'll wait till you walk away, then they'll watch you. And they go right back and do it. Disobedient. That's right, disobedient. We born in sin. And that's the reason why we can help them to be born again. Amen. 
my God. I love that old thing that passed away. I like walking in the newness of life. I love to live holy. I love God. This is my life. My very life is to please God. And that's what God is looking for, somebody that will love him and hate sin. Amen. You got to literally hate sin to be able to come out of it and leave sin alone. And now you have a new life after you come out of sin of joy, of peace, and happiness. And we got to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because thought, thought constitutes character. Whatever you're thinking about shows up. Am I right? It shows out of you. Thought constitutes character. If you're a gossiper, that's in your thought. And that's all you can think about. Gossiping. If you're a whoremonger, that's all you can think about. Every time a lady passes you, you got to turn your neck all the way around. Amen. Just so as a lady, I don't care what kind of shape she got. <laughs> you got to turn your body all the way around because you're a whoremonger. If you a liar, that's what your character constitutes, lying. You'll go from place to place, lying. And some people are not, they, they can't rest, except some people gossip so they can't rest except they walk in the gospel. And, 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 and sometimes people don't, real, you don't realize people hate to see you coming. Because that you are a gossiper. Amen. Amen. But he said, let the same man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the way we got to live. Amen. We got to live the Christ life. Christ lived down here, and the Bible said he knew no sin, Amen. and neither was there any guile found in his mouth. Is that what the word said? Christ will enter your life through the door of belief and humble faith. He wants you to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. God is looking for a pure church. Amen. He's looking for a holy church. Amen. He's looking for a church without spot. A wrinkle. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. The desire for godliness will rule your life. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you got the Holy Ghost, the desire for godliness and the desire to live right and live holy, that's what rules your life. Amen. You don't want to do nothing wrong. Yeah, a lot of these people around talking about, you can't live holy. I heard one man say, if you can show me a perfect church of people living perfect, honey, tell me about them, because I want to go join them. Well, i tell you one thing. If he don't live right, I don't care what he preach, he going to hell. Amen. You can preach till the hair stand on somebody's head. That's right, you can preach until they fall out and throw their pocketbooks, <laughs> fans. Amen. You can preach until folk cry like a baby. If you ain't living nothing, you're going to hell. Amen. 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 The Lord said many of us are going to come up in that day saying, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name and work miracles and did many wonderful works in your name. And he said, I'm going to say, depart from me. Your work was of iniquity. And that, that means that you was in sin while you was doing these things. 
And then there's a lot of people that believe the word and be here. And you can be living not a nickel up or nothing. Amen. But if they believe what God said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, that's the truth. Amen. And if you believe that, you can be here. Amen. Amen. But so many people today do not believe what the Lord said, but you need to let Christ come in and change your life. Amen. Where that old sinful nature that you have can be gone. Amen. You won't feel like you used to feel. You will feel so good to lay down at night knowing if Christ should come for you that night. Ain't it good to lay down with your mind on the Lord. Amen. Knowing that, Lord, if you come for me tonight, I'm ready. I'm ready to enter into the heavenly gates. Amen. You know, that's going to be so beautiful. Do you know that's what we are working for? So sure enough, I'm telling you, the saints of God here and everywhere, all over the world, ladies, you can't make it in your sin. You might as well pull them little pants off, put a dress on, and live holy, and look holy. Honey, you can go down the street with pants on, and the folks, ain't nobody going to ask you, are you saved? They're not going to ask you that, are you saved? Because they know, they know that saved people don't dress like that. Amen. Amen. And they know that saved ladies don't walk around with all their bosoms out, too. They know that I don't know what that's for. I don't know what that's for. Y'all looking funny. I'm closing. I'm closing. <laughs> I don't know what that's for. I don't. Because you're supposed to, a lot of these folks are married, you're supposed to have your husband. <laughs> you're not supposed to be trying to tempt nobody else. Lord, what a day we living in. Amen. Sometimes you see people in them little bones showing. You say, Lord, if she knew, if she just knew. Bones, some of them have all the way over here. Bones sticking up, you look a mess. You need to quit that. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about holiness this morning. <laughs> Praise God. Apostle Murray's word is holiness plus nothing. If you don't live it, let me leave this with you. You don't die. And if you don't die, you don't get up it. In that grid, getting up more, you're going to get up looking funny. Amen. Because you're going to hear the Lord say, Depart from me, your work was of a nigga that say, Y'all come get him. I don't even know him. Because God said, A lie, you're not going to tarry in God's sight. And if you don't live holding around here saying it, God ain't going to even let you tarry. You know why? You know, I don't know all the mind of God, but I do know some things that the Lord give me. If God would let a liar come up trying to tell him the excuse of why he didn't live holy, he going to be lying, telling, talking about somebody hindered him. I would have lived holy, but you know, the person that brought me to the Lord, they led me astray. The devil is a lie. You got to live this for yourself. They'll get up lying. Amen. Everybody's standing. I got to quit. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're calling for those today that don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. We're calling you today to come to Jesus. And let Jesus change your life. He is a life changer. He is a life changer. He is a keeper. 
He will keep you from sin and shame. Amen. The Lord is looking today for the pure in heart. For he said, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. We're living in the last days. And Jesus is soon to come. We, see, we are soon to see Jesus splitting the clouds. Coming back after his children. Hallelujah. And I'm waiting for Jesus. I don't know about you. If he don't come today, I'm going to look for him tomorrow. I'm going to look for him tomorrow. We don't want to do nothing that we would not want to be doing when Jesus comes. Amen. We need God. Guide us. And in this day and time like this, if you ever needed God's guidance, you shouldn't even go to the store without God. Actually, you shouldn't go to the clothesline without God. We're living in a day and time. Murder is nothing for people. People are gonna just look at you and hate you. You say, well, what did I do to you? Nothing, I just don't like you. I don't like how you look. But you know what? That person may not like how you look either. But they know that you got a soul and you need to be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray for those first that want to be saved. Is there anybody who want to be saved? Lift your hands to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to God. If you want the Lord to come into your life, what a beautiful way to start off 2008. What a beautiful way is to invite Jesus Christ in your life. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lift your hands and say, forgive me of my sins. Lord, come into my life. Save me, Jesus. Lord, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I'm going to go all the way with you. Jesus, touch her now. Touch her now. Lord, save her. Baptize her soul with the Holy Ghost. Keep your hands on her forever, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Keep your hands on her, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch this child. Lord, we give this child to you. Save our Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, touch her now. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you will save this child. Lord, as she give her life to you, save her forever, Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. The Lord save my soul. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, touch her now. Lord, baptize her now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let your power, your anointing go through her, Lord. Baptize her. Stay and we thank you for it.